Welcome back to Computational Tools for Engineers. We're going to be going over a next problem on Excel, using Excel to do engineering calculations. You can find uh, the course website and this course assignment here at uh, 263, CHE263 on the apmonitor.com website. We're going to be going over the homework. And this is assignment number one, and it's going to be problem number three. So right there is where we're going to be uh, starting for this one. Okay, so the uh, problem is um, a tank. We have a, a batch reactor. Okay, so basically a tank that's going to have some liquid in it, but it's not going to be liquid full. Uh, this liquid level, okay, is going to go up or down. And uh, we have some problems if there is oxygen in here okay so we don't want any oxygen the idea then is to uh, fill this tank um, you know with no liquid in it go ahead and fill it with nitrogen and then as we start adding the liquid reactant it's going to displace uh, the nitrogen and uh, we can fill this up and operate this batch reactor uh, without concern over reacting with oxygen. Okay, so we're gonna flush it out. The nitrogen is going to be at uh, 298.15 uh, Kelvin and 1.25 atmospheres. And uh, we also wanna make sure the pressure inside the tank remains greater than one atmosphere. Okay, so you have one atmosphere of you know, for the air that's outside. And we will just want to make sure that uh, nothing gets in, so we don't want to have uh, any kind of vacuum in there. Um, and we don't want to go over 2.5 atmospheres. Okay, so our pressure, the first constraint uh, is that we can't go over 2.5, and we've got to stay above one. Okay, so uh, the tank has a capacity of 4,000 just write some of this 4,000 liters. And depending on the amount of product needed, the volume of the liquid in the tank can range from 3,000. Okay, so that might be this level right here is 3,000 liters, or it might come up a little bit, up to 3,500 liters. Okay, so it's gotta be able to fluctuate. After we've done an initial purge, we don't let any more nitrogen out. And so, um, Let's see, so we need to determine the constraints um, for the uh, possible uh, operating conditions, temperatures, volumes, and pressures, so the appropriate heat transfer control equipment can be designed. Okay, so we want to know um, this gas that's above this liquid, um, what range of temperature, volumes, and pressures we're going to encounter. So here's a couple hints right here. You may assume nitrogen and liquid mixture are the same temperature and pressure. Um, you can assume that the nitrogen is an ideal gas described by the ideal gas equation. The pressure times the volume equals the moles times the ideal gas constant times temperature. One of the first things you need to do is calculate the amount of nitrogen that is placed into the empty tank. Okay, because it's going to be 0 0.25 uh, or about a quarter of that after you initially fill it with the liquid. So that'll help us determine how much nitrogen is in the tank. And then you can assume that changes in volume of liquid due to changes in temperature and pressure are negligible. Okay, so temperature doesn't affect the density of the liquid. Um, and the volatility of the liquid is low, such that nitrogen is essentially the only component of the gas phase. So there's not much of that liquid that's going to vaporize and um, contribute to a partial pressure in the uh, gas phase. So remember the number of moles, temperature, and pressure and volume of the gas are related. They're related by this expression right here. So you can only set three of these four independently. And the hardest part of this problem is figuring out what's needed. And then once you do, uh, figure out what's needed, um, it's gonna be fairly easy, especially if you remember to use the dollar sign in your equations so that you don't have to type each one separately and individually. Okay, so let's go back to our, uh, so this is going to be problem number three. I'm going to create a new worksheet. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select this little plus sign down here to create a new sheet. Uh, go ahead and long click on this or right click, and then you can rename. 
and I'm going to rename this as problem number three. And uh, I'm going to just adjust the zoom level here on the very bottom right, just so you can see it just a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to collapse uh, this top toolbar just so it gives us a little bit more to work with. Okay, collapse the top ribbon. I can pin that back uh, later. So the initial properties that I have for my tank. Um, uh, so let's go back to our problem and just see if we can get some of the initial values here. Okay, I'm going to put this off to the left and make it just a little bit smaller. Okay, so initial properties. Um, okay, and let me go ahead and do... Okay, so here we go. We have the initial temperature. Um, it's going to be 298.15 Kelvin. Uh, I'm going to have an initial pressure, um, and that's going to be 1.25, and that's atmospheres. And then I have the volume of the gas, which is 4,000 liters. Um, and uh, I need my ideal gas constant. And so then I'm going to be able to calculate the number of moles of nitrogen. Okay, and that's going to be in moles. Okay, so I need to get the ideal gas constant because I know that this is equal to, if I have PV equals NRT, I know N equals P times V divided by RT. Uh, so I need to find R. And I'll try to find an R value that's in you know these units uh, right there. So I'm just going to go to um, ideal gas constant and just see if I can find... Um, Okay, I'll go to Wikipedia for this one. And there's a bunch of values of R here for our ideal um, you know, gas equation. Let's go ahead and try to find the one with atmospheres. And okay, there it is right here. Liters, atmospheres, Kelvin, mole. I'll just go ahead and copy that number right here. Liters, atmospheres, Kelvin, moles and go ahead and paste it in right here let's see if it pastes ah oh, it didn't paste okay i'm gonna have to just oh no it did okay it just took a little bit okay so it pasted in and that is liters atmospheres um divided by kelvin mole okay liters okay so you got it all right let's go ahead and calculate this now uh this is going to be the pressure uh, times the volume divided by the ideal gas constant and divided by the temperature. So that's how many moles I have initially in my tank. And then we're going to purge some of the nitrogen. Um, so this is going to be just 25% of nitrogen that's left over. Okay, and so that's going to be equal to this number times 0 0.25, and that's the number of moles we're going to have as the batch reactor is operating. Okay, so now what we want to do is calculate the range of temperatures and, uh, and volume of the uh, gaseous liquid. Okay, so nominally it's going to be a thousand, um, you know, a thousand liters. And then we might be filling or, or draining this. The liquid's going to go between uh, 3,000 to 3,500 liters. So I know that the volume of my gas is going to go between 500 to 1,000 liters. So let's just go ahead and make some rows up top here. And I'll just do volume. Okay, so I'm going to do make this bigger. Volume of gas. And let me put in some values here like 500, 550. 600. I could do this all the way over, or I can just kind of uh, do two numbers, get the increment right, and then when it turns into a little black, uh, 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 I guess, crosshair there, uh, if you can drag it over, you'll see it kind of filling in those values for you, and you want to go all the way up to a thousand. So Excel is smart enough to know when you drag over two numbers, it'll just kind of keep incrementing those and fill those in for you. Okay, so these are the volume of the gas, and then this is going to be the temperature of gas, and that'll be in Kelvin. 
and this volume of gas uh, will be in liters. Okay, so, um, and then the temperature of the gas, um, I'm just gonna put in a bunch of uh, temperatures uh, just to make sure we have a good range here. And uh, I'll do that as increments of 25. And let's go up to about 600. Okay, so 600 Kelvin is a high range and 100 is the low range. Now we're gonna be constructing a table here, kind of like a times table. Do you remember one of those? It's like one, two, three, you know, and you had to do these in uh, elementary school, um, two, three, something like that. And then you do, that's gonna be that uh, times that, okay. And then this one is gonna be equal to this times this one, okay. And you could go down through this times table. Excel does something really nice for you, which is allows you to put in some dollar signs. So when the um, uh, row or column is gonna be fixed, we'll go ahead and put in a dollar sign. And so I want the um, I want the H to be fixed as I drag this down. So I'm gonna put a dollar sign there to tell it as I drag it down, don't move that one, okay? And then this one, I want um, you know the eight to be fixed, okay? So I wanna always keep that row of values and for the blue, the column, that column there, but I'll let the other value change. And then as I drag this over again, I wait till I get the little black crosshair there and um, it'll fill it in. Okay, so let's look at this one. Uh, so it took this row value and this column value. Okay, and then if I double click over here, you can see it took this row value and that column value. So it, it uh, didn't shift the other value. And then if I come here and highlight these three and then drag down, then it'll fill in and show me it's three times three equals nine. Okay, so that was my times table uh, right there. I just highlight that and say there's my answer. Okay, um, so we're gonna do kind of the same thing, but with the ideal gas, um, you know, this ideal gas uh, law, and uh, we wanna calculate the pressure now. So we know that the ideal gas law is PV equals NRT, and uh, we wanna be able to calculate P. We know N, and we already calculated that um, right here. So that one's gonna be a fixed one. We're gonna do a double uh, dollar sign there to make sure it doesn't move from B9 for that calculation. Okay, so now we have the pressure um, is going to be equal to N. Okay, now if you hit F4, it'll um, give it to you automatically. Okay, so if I hit F4, uh, it puts in the dollar signs. If I keep hitting F4, it kind of alternates between which one is uh, fixed. And if you hit, keep hitting it, you'll get back to B9 again. So I want the double dollar signs. Uh, so that one won't change. And then I'll multiply it by the R value. That's gonna be a double dollar sign as well. And then multiply it by T. Now let me hit F4 a couple times until just the dollar sign is in front of the E, but not the seven, okay? Because we want, as I drag it down, I want to go to 125 and then 150 and then 175. Okay, and there I have it. I can also just type that in uh, myself if it, if you have a hard time, uh, you know, you can type in that dollar sign yourself. Okay, and then I want divided by, I'm gonna hit the up arrow and go to F6. Now in this case, um, you know, do you need the F fixed or do you need the six fixed? Um, so think about that for a second. Okay, and then uh, as you cycle through, um, you know, fix the six, okay? Uh, because I want that row to always be the number six, but as I drag it down, I don't want it to change it to, um, you know, seven or something like that. Okay, so there's my volume, there's my pressure right there in atmospheres. Okay, so that would be too low. So if the volume of gas, I forgot to, 500 and the temperature got to 100 Kelvin, that would violate my conditions of, uh, I need to be greater than one atmosphere. But what I can do now is just go ahead and drag this down, okay? Or what you can do is you can just copy it, do a control C, 
and then um, select the region you'd like to paste into. You can hold the shift key down and hit right and then down and then paste. Okay, and it will, it will copy that equation in, but use the volume of gas that's right above it and the temperature that's to the left of it um, as we construct this times table like thing. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, uh, copy this for all of the cells. Okay, so I'm just going to select, go down and then over a bunch. I'm going to go over just a little bit more than I need to. I'll copy it and then I'll go back and delete some of these that I don't need. If I want to select large quantities, I can hit the shift and then control. So the shift and control held down and then hit the right and then hit down. And you'll select all of the region there and then hit delete. Okay, so let's make this, this uh, table a little bit prettier now to see what are the conditions that will give us the right pressure range. So um, let me go ahead and select this. And this is called conditional formatting. It gives you uh, just a little bit more of a visual uh, feel for what's going on with your data. Uh, so let's see, I'm going to go to home. Uh, let's see, so conditional formatting is right here. It's a little uh, button, and so you can easily spot trends using colors or other things that are a little bit more visual than just looking at a bunch of numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna um, highlight cell rules, and I wanna do something that's in between a pressure of one and 2.5. So if I select this, I wanna uh, do all the cells that are between one and 2.5. And then I can select this little drop down, and then you can have a custom format if you want. Um, let's see, I can do this one, you know, just whichever one is going to look good. Just because it's kind of a, uh, the good conditions are, are those. Um, we'll do the green uh, with dark green text. Um, although I don't know why you'd ever want to do dark green on top of green, but let's go ahead and do that anyway. Um, Okay, so there are all the conditions that work um, that are going to the combinations of volumes and temperatures that lead to the appropriate pressure range within our tank. Okay, so just to review what we've done, um, we calculated uh, you know, these initial properties right here of how much uh, gas was in the tank. Uh, we said that there's only 25% left. And then uh, once it starts operating, uh, the liquid level in this tank is going to go from 3,000 to 3,500, leaving a volume of gas between 500 and 1,000. And we just put in some temperature ranges. If you guessed wrong, you know, the wrong temperature range, you'll see that this kind of goes, so you only guess between 200 and uh, 300. You'd see, well, I need to go a little bit further so I can see when it's violated, um, you know, violated the, the constraints. Okay, so that concludes uh, this example problem. Um, I'll go ahead and post uh, the solution on the course uh, website, and, um, and then we'll move on to some more advanced Excel topics.